Welcome back to my shed build. Now today, if you've seen the series so far, you would have seen me make the base, the concrete base, uh, the actual wooden base, the walls, the roof, felt in the roof of this shed build. Now at this point, I need to put some doors on it. Uh, so that's what today's video is about. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make it out of reclaimed timber as far as possible. Uh, let me show you what I've got to do very first thing. Okay, so I'm inside the shed now. Uh, the very first thing I've got to do is clean up these edges. Uh, now, obviously this is the overlap of the breathable membrane uh, that I put on when I put the cladding on. So what I've got to do is now trim this back. Uh, and also here at the top of the door, there's a part of the cladding is overhanging. So what I need to do is remove this, cut this out, and then I've got to put a door liner in. Okay, and what I'm gonna use for that is this stuff here. Now it's a selection of bits of wood. None, no two of these are the same. So what I'm gonna to have to do is cut these, uh, give them a bit of a tidy up so I can actually make a frame to go around the door. Okay, so that's the very first thing to do. Right, so to trim the overhanging bit of cladding here, all I'm gonna use is this multi-tool uh, with the blade in it, and I'm gonna go flush with the, uh, the top here, and just cut my way through. Let's get on with that. Right, so for the door liner, a uh, closer look at the bits of wood I've got. Um, now they're all like this. There's bits missing out of them. Uh, this is real salvageable stuff. Uh, I've got three bits that are approximately the same width uh, and the same depth. Uh, and then I've got this other plank. Uh, and then what I'm gonna have to do, this one I'm gonna have to cut down the middle uh, and I'll try and get a matching pair out of that. Uh, and then two of these I'll probably have to cut off some rotten bits and then uh, use those as a matching pair as well. Right, I've quickly changed over to the uh, bandsaw because with reclaimed timber, sometimes it's not as straight as you'd like. Uh, and putting it through a table saw can be a bit unpredictable. Uh, so I'm gonna use the, uh, the bandsaw just for the final trimming of the edges. Right, to go across the top on both the doors, I've got this. It's slightly thicker than the others, uh, but I should be able to get two pieces out of this one length. It's a bit knackered, look. Uh, but let's chop that for the tops. Right, it's gonna be no fancy joinery on this. It's literally just gonna be a butt joint here 
and there and then I'm going to pick up the whole frame and put it in the hole. Uh, all I'm going to do is drill a couple of pilot holes in here to stop the wood splitting uh, and then screw them in. So let's do that. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the top in first to lift it up as high as it can go and be square. Then I'm going to screw the sides in, uh, but to make sure it looks straight from outside, I'm going to use a piece of um, timber against the cladding and then push it up against it and then that way it will be flush with the cladding. Right, so that's the rough line I've done for this door. Uh, all I've got to do now is do exactly the same thing for that door. Okay, so the other door frame's in now. That's this one. Uh, I've got to give these a bit of a sand because if you look at this one, uh, I actually use that as part of the sh shuttering for when I did the concrete base. So it's got some cement on it. Uh, so let me give these a bit of a sand down quickly and then we'll start making the doors. Right, so what we're going to do now is quickly draw up a design for the doors. Uh, now these doors should be quite rugged, quite chunky, uh, but very simple to make. I'm just going to use like half lap joints. Now I've copied this idea. It's a blatant copy uh, from Leo at Handicraft. Uh, in this video, uh, he's recently made a, a door for his outside loo. So I'm going to copy that. So thanks, Leo. Uh, right, so the design is going to be this. Right, so this is our door liner now. Uh, what we've got to do now is just basically using the uh, roof choice timber that I had, um, make a frame like this. Obviously it's a door, so. Okay, so this is gonna be made out of the uh, roof joist timber. Each of these corners is going to be a half lap joint it's going to be glued. Uh, I'll probably put some brad nails in it first, see how it goes, maybe have some screws as well. Uh, also going to have some cross braces here to actually give the door some strength. And then each panel is going to be infilled with this stuff. All right, so what I've got here is a load of old decking. I mean, this decking is probably about 20 years old. Um, but it's just recently been given to me, see if I could do something with it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the plane of thickness are, chop it all up, and I'm going to use that as the infills. That's the plan. Let's see how we get on. Right, because I made the shed, uh, obviously two doors, they're different sizes. Not by much, only by about five mil, but that five mil could make the difference. So I've measured them as two separate doors, written all my instructions on here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one door first and then do the other door. Right, let's chop some joists.
Right, as usual, I haven't got quite enough material. Uh, I've got enough to do the frame, the outside frame for one door. Uh, the other door, I've got enough for the two styles, rails, the two rails. I've got enough for the two rails, uh, but what I'm gonna have to do is use this stuff, which is some old bits I've got off of the old woodshed I knocked down. Uh, it's the same dimensions, not treated as much, but it's all gonna be painted anyway, so that should be good. So I'm gonna use these. Right, to do the half lap joints, there's a million and one different uh, YouTube videos showing you how to do this, so I won't go over it too much. But basically all you do is, because all my material is gonna be the same size, you measure the width, okay? Then you come in from the end, whatever your width is, strike a line. Measure your depth. You measure half of that depth, so 22. Okay, scribe a line. Okay, and what we need to be doing is removing this section. Okay, so up to this line. Okay, and the way I'm gonna do that is by setting the depth on my miter saw. So it cuts down to this depth. I'm gonna do a series of cuts and then knock them all out and clean it up with a chisel. Okay, simple as that. Right, I've ended up with a couple of little grooves here. This is my very first one, obviously. Uh, a couple of little grooves here, and that's because the depth stop here on my miter saw uh, slid back into position, so I end up plunging almost full depth. Okay, so when you're doing this, make sure you keep an idea on uh, an eye on how deep your blade is going. Right, so after ages of doing half lap joints, so now each end has got a joint like this. Okay, so these are the three styles, and these are the two rails. Uh, and basically what happens is these all fit together like this. Okay, so that's the basic shape of the door. Obviously what I've got to do now is glue and stick some bread nails in this. Uh, then what I'll probably do is when it's dry, I'll probably stick some screws in it. Uh, I've got to make some cross braces and also route out for the inserts. All I've got to do is do all of this again for the second door. Right, so I finally got this first door um, clamped together and it's gluing. I've put a few uh, brad nails in it. What I'm gonna do now is leave this overnight to, uh, to dry. I've learned a very bad lesson. Don't leave treated timber on your table saw overnight. Let me show you what happens in one night. Okay, so I left this piece of treated timber laying on the table saw overnight. This is obviously cast iron. Look at this, proper rusty. And it's not just surface rust, it's pitted. Uh, and it's all the way across, look, on the other side. Yeah, one night, don't do that. Right, so I've got the outer frames for both my doors made now. Uh, the only problem is I've cut them wrong. I've actually cut them, they're too long. Uh, let me show you what my mistake was. Okay, so I went out and I measured between here and here, allowing about five mil top and bottom for clearance. Uh, and I measured that at 170.5. By the time I got into the workshop, what I cut was 
175.0. That's what I did. Now the doors are too big. So now I've got to cut some of those. Oh, Wally. Right, so the door frames are now cut to the right length after I um, measured them wrong, but that's a different story. Uh, the next thing to do now is to infill these panels. Okay, and what I'm gonna use is this stuff, which is a load of old decking. Uh, I've got a big pile of it here. Okay. Uh, now this has obviously been down in someone's garden for about 20 years. Uh, what I'm gonna do is square off the ends then try and get rid of all these ribs uh, using the planar thicknesser uh, to see what sort of material I've got. It's about an inch thick, uh, so by the time I've taken these ribs off, I should have still have about 20 mil left, uh, which should be enough for the infills on the uh, doors. Right, so after about two hours of using the uh, planar thicknesser, it's so noisy. Uh, I've turned that pile of decking into some usable timber. Uh, probably got another hour or so to go with sanding just to find out what material I've got. Okay, uh, probably need a little bit more as well, so I think I've got some more in the garden. All right, but that's it for tonight because it's now nine o'clock at night and I'm knackered. Right, so I've just spent hours and hours uh, putting these through the planar thickness up. Now, obviously these were decking boards. They were very damp. Uh, it blocked up my planar thickness up. But now I've got these. Uh, so the next thing I've got to do is actually put a cross brace in each panel. Okay, this is to actually add to the structure of the door. But I've got to get these the right way round. Let me show you what I mean. So we've got a door frame like this, and the first thing you've got to decide is what side the hinges are going to go on. Now, in my case, uh, one's going to be going one way and the other's going to be going the other. So on this first door, the hinges will be on this side. Okay, so the hinges are going to be like this. Okay, so the cross braces, uh, or the support braces, whatever they're called, have got to go from the hinge side upwards. Okay, so here, there, and then this side like that. Now the reason for that is because this is the furthest point away from the hinge you've got a load going down this way so what you need is you need this load okay to be transferred through this to this hinge okay that's the principle and the same with this otherwise what will happen is eventually your door will end up looking like that 
okay it will sag okay which is no good to anybody right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use one of these uh, pieces of decking for each cross brace Right, so before I mount the uh, cross brace in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pocket hole joints here and here. Um, I'll do those in a moment. Now, when Leo made his door, what he did is he routed out all around the edge here, ready for his panels to sit in. Uh, I don't have a router bit the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to put a batten along here and along the bottom there and across there and across there so there will be battens to support uh, the sides and the tops and the bottoms of each panel right the next problem i've got is this cross beam is the same thickness as the infills okay this is one of the infills i've cut to size uh, problem is when that goes in if it goes in okay here We've got a little bit of a lip it's probably only one or two mil okay that's because of the thickness of this and the thickness of this is thicker than this okay so what i'm gonna to have to do rather than plane all of these down because there there's lots of them uh, what i'll do is i'll haven't mounted these yet i'll quickly run each one of these cross braces this one and this one through the planer and probably take about three or four mil off of each okay and then pocket hold these in then cut all these to size and then put some battens in and screw it all together. Right, so I don't know if you remember, in one of my previous videos in this series, uh, I cut all these battens. Uh, they were supposed to be to hold the cladding on. Uh, I decided to go away from that idea because it was going to take too long. But it does mean I've got a load of battens. And it just so happens that these battens are exactly the same thickness to my cross braces. That's good. Which means I can put one of these here, one of these here, and all around the edges. So then when I put this in, I can screw it to here, and here, and here, and here. How good is that? So I'm gonna use them old buttons. But before that, I'm gonna go into the living room, turn the telly on, and I'm gonna watch the new king, King Charles III, make his first speech. So I'm gonna watch the telly for a bit.
Right, so both panels are now filled in. Uh, they're not screwed in yet. Uh, what I've managed to do is trim off the end two on both panels, uh, just about seven mil on either end. That way they're all equidistant, uh, but the end ones are slightly thinner, but you'll never notice. Uh, what I want to do now before I actually screw it all together, uh, I just want to put a little chamfer like I've done on this one, a little chamfer on the edge of each one, just to give it that sort of log roll type of effect to match the rest of the shed. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is using my Triton router, uh, just going to quickly go over the edges. I won't show you that, it's a bit boring. Right, so I've quickly hit this with the, uh, the sander. Uh, it's pretty much ready to go now. I need to give it a good coat of treatment before it starts changing shape. Uh, all the edges where I've cut, I need to treat it and then the whole thing's gonna be painted. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Um, just gotta make another one now, exactly the same. Right, so the doors are now ready to hang. Uh, I'm going to hang them using these hinges, which are like basic T hinges. Uh, because the doors are so heavy, uh, I'm going to use three of these. So one at the very top, one at the very bottom, one in the middle. Uh, so they can correspond with these, yeah. with these styles. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to mount them on the frame. The frame could have been thicker. I didn't realize the doors are going to be this heavy. These could have been thicker, so I may have to reinforce these. We'll come to that in a minute. The first thing I've got to do is figure out where they're going. Right, so I've got my three hinges in place. Uh, because the doors are so heavy, I'm not going to be able to hold them up while I'm screwing the screws in. So I've just got a batten, which is probably about five or six mil thick. I'm going to lay this on the bottom and then put the door on top of that. Right, then I'm going to space it out this end and then put the screws in.
It's getting very dark in here now because we put some doors on it. Uh, what I've got to do now is put a batten around the edge on the inside for the door to close to. Uh, I don't have enough of the right size batten yeah, to go all the way around. Uh, but what I've got is the offcuts from the fascia boards, which are about actually a little bit thicker. But I shall cut these into strips about this wide and use those. Right, a couple of bands to lymph. Uh, to stop the door from pushing outwards while I'm inside, uh, just put this little brace across here. Let's flush with the door frame. That should stop it pushing open while I'm putting the battens on. So let's go and put some battens in. Right, so that's about it now. Both doors are made. Uh, I've showed you how I made them out of some old decking. Uh, they're really chunky doors. They, they probably didn't need to be that heavy. Uh, I've now got a clasp, a handle, and a padlock on each door. Uh, yeah, it's been a good build, but these are bloody heavy. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Right, so we're at the stage now, we're going to start making the doors. Uh, so what we're going to do is a very simple door, but hopefully it'll look quite a... Quite, quite a... Quite a... Quite a thicker different. Right, to trim the... Uh, where are we? Here we are. To trim the bit of 